What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Nerd On Update, our weekly show in which we talk about the news that is interesting to us, sad to us, mad to us, all range of emotions to us, and the later part of the show in which we answer questions from you, the people. <laughs> but the actual first part of the show in which we just hang out and we be friends and we talk to each other and the audience. Hi, audience. Hi, Tom. It's been a while, I feel like. Hey! How's it going? <laughs> We're doing thing. I promise you, I, I promise that I was trying to be on last week's show. I had my news ready, and then my Wi-Fi was like, peace. I'm out. Such a funny, such a funny thing technology is. <laughs> technology. You know? Oh, yeah, we were talking about that in the green room. The reliance on yeah. technology. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny one. I mean, I, I, the thing is, it's it, like... We're, if you guys aren't in the green room, uh, I know we don't always every time do it, but like when you when we do do it, uh, we do get a chance to like kind of talk about things off the cuff and just like kind of bring you guys in a little bit more personal into our lives what we do. And Josh and I were talking a little bit about <clears throat> scheduling things between uh, friends, uh, but like that's the funny thing as you as we get older is like, man, you really have to schedule things oh, yeah. with friends. It's and sometimes it's months easy. out or weeks yeah, it's, out. It, it's not it's not as easy as it being a kid where it was like, cool, you can not do your homework and then just hang out with friends. <laughs> or like you could just stay at school late with your friends and then you're hanging out and you see them every day because you're forced to. And, you know, obviously, again, it's, it's it makes it makes making friends with work friends so much easier. But in our kind of like line of work, these aren't things that you see everyone every single day most so, people like, it's, it's, that i know in the entertainment industry once they leave the studio job they're fucking out they're just like you know it's like that i mean most most studio jobs that i had or entertainment jobs i've had seven eight o'clock p.m maybe later and then people get into life stuff like laundry and dishes and so making plans with friends i just feel like i'm dating I feel like I'm dating when I'm making a new friend. Like I'm do do I call them? Is is it too soon to call them? Like she, I don't want to seem like I'm like needy or anything. So it's weird. It's weird. I don't like it. I'm uh <clears throat> I I have recently made a decision that I only do laundry and only go grocery shopping during the weekday oh. because uh it's so I can make sure I maximize the amount of I don't have to do shit for anyone or anything on the weekend. Like, I dig it. It, it, it. It's harder. It's so much harder. And it's so like, you know, the meme of, I don't know if, if you know the meme. I, I don't even know if it's that relevant, but it's like, uh, um, uh, do laundry one day and fold it in the same day is a huge accomplishment. Like <laughs> I do my laundry, I take it out of the dryer and then it sits on my floor or on my bed. Uh, and I fold it, but I'm like, I, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so done. Uh, also, shout out uh, Bad Reprint joining the Nerd on Nation. I see that in the chat. Good. Thank you for, for supporting yeah, the show, I baby. That. I love that. Thank you. Be rad. Be rad. Um, um, now, Bad Reprint gets to see all the videos, mm -hmm. all, the, all the shows, all the media that we've been working on. A lot of it is going to be my face. It's going to be you because you have more time been, on your hands. <laughs> I've been shooting so much shit. And I'm just like, I hope they don't fucking hate this because it's going to be like nonstop me for like weeks. If you got on the end. time, if you got the time, uh, here we are. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, jo so, so, so let's do the thing that we actually do. Jo Josh, what's, what's been life like? What we haven't seen you in a week. What, what's what's been the weekend anything new and exciting going on um let's see some some there's a few things i think um i book something pretty major that i can't talk about but it's like career changing and i'm like that's awesome oh shit is this happening um it's kind of one of those things like i i uh over the course of the last few years i've gotten better and better and feeling better about myself and more confident. And I was like, you know, of course I'm going to, this is going to happen for me at some point. And when it happened, Bonnie was like, well, yeah, you said you were going to do that and it's happening. But you know, when those things, when those 
dreams start happening and you're like, oh, it, that's right. That they actually do happen and they become, quote, normal things. So, so that's cool. I can't say anything about it, but I'm like, that's cool. That's really cool. And I also don't want to get too excited about it yet because it's like the thing hasn't happened yet. So I'm like, I hate to be that guy against myself, but I'm like, things can happen. Things happen. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. Oh my God, Zella Moore. Hey. It's nice to see your name. Also, in chat. hey to everyone else in chat T, -T Dog, Mamba, Battery Print, Zell. Hello, hello. Uh, anything else, Josh? Are you, are you, are you, are you, uh, I started producing starting? music again. Um, mm. I'm working with a friend. Um, I'm going to start with a cover, starting with a simple cover. I'm, I filmed it. Uh, looks pretty sexy. Uh, I filmed nice. the acoustic. I, I recorded the and filmed the acoustic guitar the other day. Um, he's going to do some electric guitar. I have a violinist coming this weekend. And then nice. I'm going to do some vocal work. And I want to put it together in this, like, I want to produce it, mix it, and all that kind of stuff. But I also want to put, like, some sort of social media touch on it because I think it would be fun just creatively. Um, oh yeah, Paddington's laying face down. I'll, I'll fix that when it's not my turn to talk. What else? Don't don't T dog. Don't worry. T maybe Paddington's just the visual expression that Josh's been working pretty pretty hard, and it's just the Pinocchio in the puddle. Yeah, this is it. I am a, <laughs> he's like, I just I'm unable to can. Um, what else? Uh, I've been. I I told you that I'm taking a writing class, right? No, you have not. Yeah, I'm taking a a personal essay class. So, um, I mean, uh, one that I know is David Sedaris. So, it just uh, like really, uh, just personal essays, kind of memoir, kind of stuff. And it's been really, it's been really fun. Like it's reminding me that that I am a I am a good writer. Uh, but like actually putting it down. Like I finished my essay today. I wasn't supposed to, but. I just kept writing and things happen. And what now, happens if you do? Nothing. I've just, now we're in revisions in this class. It's like, it, I, no, it's, it's funny. It's like, I wasn't supposed to. I was like, or do you get shot? Well, it's homework. <laughs> well, it's ho no, I just mean it's homework and I'm like two weeks ahead. Like it just, I'm, it's only supposed to be like 2,500 to 3,000 words. Mine is like 3,000. It's, and it's done. It's eight pages. And I'm like, I finished the thought. It's done. Now I'm in revision mode and, but yeah. yeah anyway but things are good like How a are wizard you? It, it will finish when it's meant to be finished and you finish exactly. it a little early exactly how about you man how are you doing uh <laughs> that felt like a really you know, loaded <laughs> it, it's it's one of those things like without having like you know this isn't going to be like a dumping ground like there's a lot of people on the internet that try, try to make like uh you know chat sessions always like a a trauma dumping ground and i'm not trying to do one of those things but it's like it's it's been like a lot of weirdo shit lately and uh not fun times but um they are kind of one of those things where it's just like man this sometimes you're, you're not gonna have a good time and these might be one of those times and those are just longer than you expect and uh funny enough uh I've been while I've been doing so much editing for all this like YouTube stuff for Nerd On, I've been uh watching The Sopranos in the background. Sopranos is a great show to to put on while you're doing shit, um, because it just feels like people are in the house, <laughs> um, uh, and I it just always show. reminds me of <laughs> the 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 wisdom, not even the wisdom. James it's Gandolfini. the it's the uh. It's the hopeful, but also never coming to fruition. Or maybe that is what really matters to Tony Soprano of you're going to remember times and hopefully you learn to remember the good times. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those like, man, this is uh, one of those things where. Uh, uh... <laughs> Sorry, I just read the chat. I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Um uh, you just remember the good times, and you hopefully you cherish those things. Uh, battery print saying my man was spotted at an FYC event in downtown Disney. Truly, the worst timeline. Uh, I mean, we can talk about that, but it's also like not a great thing to think about. Um, FYC event. For those who don't know, it's a four-year consideration event uh, that all the studios have, 
when they're trying to appeal to award season so they'll get people who are part of the academy or whatever governor's ball whatever uh and this one was a netflix event uh that i went to because i've worked in tv uh, it, it is technically by my right i get invited to these things mm -hmm. uh, but i end up finding out that i'm actually not the there's a different tier levels of academy members and i'm not at the certain tier level that i ought to be going to these events like technically there is a money are you threshold. crashing are you crashing parties essentially nope my friend invited me oh okay never but mind. um i went to that thing and uh you know it was like oh i don't get invites to this like you should be invited to these things i'm like i don't know maybe blah blah and then i found i was like oh I'm not this level because I can't pay this much. Mm. And I was like, oh, never mind. Um, but I'm like, it's it's one of those like, you know, will I have will I have money for rent next month? I don't know. Like th these are one of those things. I'm like, ah, and it's like, oh, do I go visit family who are visiting town? And it's like, uh, and then that opens up all this like argument and content contentious shit of like. Do you spend time with people who want to spend time with you if that means you have to go out of your way to do that? And then you are then burning more money to do those things that you don't have. Um, yes. So it's uh, that's the, the that's the the weirdo uh, like, uh, is it good? Is it bad? Do I spend my time doing things that aren't making me money, but are, quote unquote, good things that good people should be doing? Because if I was doing the smart, fiscally responsible thing, no one would see me online at all. Ever. Ever. So. Uh, I get it. The, I've, been, I've been on a fiscal time. I've been on this like fiscal like ban, so to speak, <laughs> where I'm just like Bonnie and are like, no, we can't. I just like someday we this isn't going to be forever. But like right now, no, you may not do that. <laughs> it, it is. It is. We cannot. Uh, we we are unable to can yeah um and uh but it's, it's one of those things it's like tomorrow i'll be going to like i went to some other mixer events but it's one of those things like do i have to pay to play and it's like fucking christ and it's like um i go to this mixer event i go to that mixer event and you're like and like luckily so far some of the mixer events are like cool here's a wristband drinks are whatever i'm like cool i can fucking hang out i talk to people but then you know some people are like Oh, are you in this thing? Are you paying for that thing? I'm uh, I early in my unemployment, I started taking a an accelerator class so I can kind of like be better in a room, kind mm. of uh, learn what kind how of to accelerator? use. It's 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 just called like a decision maker accelerator. So like pretty much, first of all, my professional resume shit is like is like perfect. And then secondly, am I full of shit when I'm in those meetings? And then thirdly, do I know how to actually develop those networks? And um, the most important thing that I found was like, okay, I really need to clean up my appearance. And that's like one thing. Outside of that, everything else, they're like, you know, I, I, I love people and all, but like um, uh, some people don't have a lot of... Um, social know-how to like build relationships and like be collaborative business partners and they're in this class they really like if you're not feeling like you're comfortable enough to be like in a room with people and without looking like needy try like you might want to take like a beginner course before you're taking this class and i was like nope that's not me and i took it and i was like okay and then but there's still people asking questions that i'm like oh well, it, it's, it's just interesting. The perspective is interesting when you find out, like, sometimes people kind of just lack social cues of just being like, hey, man, be cool. Like, this is not about closing a deal. Don't hard sell everybody. It's about getting interested in other people, making sure they remember you. And that's it. Like, yeah. Um, but um, doing that stuff. Um, it's uh, there's it's, a lot I, just to like. Okay. comment on that a little bit because i've been thinking a lot about that as like just that concept of like how are you in a room like just at like at you being me of like a lot proverbial. of yeah proverbial you it's like 
a lot of this business, there was a lot of times in, in specifically in audio that there'd be people that were like, gosh, you're just so personable. And this other person just isn't. And it's very interesting of like how you present yourself to the world. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like not coming off and like the, the mind fuckery that is wanting something really bad, like a job or to sell a script or whatever the heck to be cast in something, but not act like you want it. <laughs> like to be like, I, I, like to, to be secure in yourself, to not be um, desperate, if that makes sense. To come off I, as a um, I have, I have found the most interesting, how do I say it? Um, I have heard <laughs> feedback on people from people who are in several positions higher than me talk about other people that I worked with and have no good thing to say about people who are like generally as a person, I don't find anything wrong, but then they'll just be like, they're a bunch of nothing. They have no ideas and they just sit around, and do nothing. Wow. And I'm like, because you don't watch them do nothing because you don't watch them. Doesn't mean they're not doing anything. And I'm like, versus like me, I've had people say like, well, Tom, you're very abrasive. And I've had other people like, well, Tom knows what he's talking about. And I was just like, <laughs> so it's, it's very interesting because in that same regard where it's like, I've seen to me, vanilla burnt toast, fucking bland people just get in good favor with certain people. And then I've seen like absolute idiots who are just like cool, but like, absolutely lack any real hard knowledge and then like yeah. also get away with like kind of proliferating upwards and i was like i kind of don't get it because it's like you could be very nice and know nothing <laughs> then yeah. and then you're fine and then you could be like mean and know everything and then everyone loves you it's like yeah. i don't know where you want anyone to be and then i'll see myself being like okay, I'm going to be the good guy. I'm going to be learning a lot. And then it's like, cool. No one's ever going to ask you for any creative ideas. You are going to be the pencil pusher. You are just going to pick up, you know, coffee and do dumb shit. And you're like, this sucks. And then I've done times where it's like, cool, everyone shut up. You listen to me and I do things here. And then they're like, okay, yeah, Tom's got it taken care of. I was like, what the fuck? Like, it's, it's such a weird, like, and you don't know who, like, which camp to really go into. But I mean, and this is like, you know, I'm in the throes of a writer's room and then like they're trying to like pitch out the next few ideas. And I'm just like, all these ideas suck, but they're all from like really nice people. And then I'm like, no, it needs to be like this. And you guys need to understand that. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, we should do that. And it's like, I, I hate that. Like, you know, sometimes you, that needs to happen. But yeah, yeah. people feelings is, you know, if the AMC stocks and GameStop stocks taught us anything is that. People are so emotional that like really a lot of decision making is not a logical thing. Yeah. No, I, I, I was in an acting class a couple of weeks ago and I was just, I walked out of that class just really, really confused. Cause I was just like, I, I, this person directed this, this actor who came to the table with, um, a really dynamic read and they were directed into this really boring performance and i was like why i i don't i don't and i don't understand like how how is that you are going to hear 300 auditions how is that vanilla going to stand out in any fucking capacity i just anyway I'm always just like, what? Uh, anyway. Shall we do news? Yeah, let's do news. T-Dog, if you don't want to hear this and only hear news, then go listen to any other million-dollar podcast that also put 20 minutes of ads. I'm kidding. Um, you and me first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go first. My news is... Um, Hold on. He wants to clap now. Okay. Claps for, for... I'm so sorry. I'm preoccupied because somebody wants to... 
uh, I'm somebody's asking me if I'm available for a recording session like right now and I'm like what uh, claps mm -hmm. for fun uh, claps for no more news um, <laughs> only commentary like what a real podcast is if you want to watch the news make your news outlets better because they all suck right now looking at you <laughs> IGN all right uh want me to go first so you can answer that message uh yeah you go first i'm so sorry yeah I, and i have a lot of stuff so oh okay cool take your time. i got time um so first news that came into my mind today or as i was populating stuff um andy circus we were talking about ape school because the new kingdom of the planet of the rise of the invasion of the final of the dark side of the beyond of the uh dark world of the um first avenger of the um uh ragnarok of the thunder of the dawn of justice of the uh forbidden uh kingdom of the uh uh lost uh, uh map of the skull <laughs> of the uh doom the golden the... crystal <laughs> of the who gives a shit? I'm so tired of these fucking long, like, drawn out titles. Put the fucking numbers back in. One, two, three, four, five. Like, Fast and Furious is the only one that got it right. Um, uh, Ape School, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. But uh, in news, Andy Serkis will be directing a new Lord of the Rings movie uh, with Gollum, I think, as the main character. It's based on the Gollum know... video game, right? I was going to say, was we like all know <laughs> fucking Gollum led anything is bangers for money. And I'm like, man, I love Andy Circus. God bless him. But good fucking luck. Because, man, if there's one thing New Line Cinema, Warner Brothers knows how to do with uh, Gollum is make him fucking nothing and not know how to capitalize on that little goblin. Uh, yes, Tom, the series of Fate of the Furious did it right. They did. They did. And then you know what? They did it half right because they listened to the audience, but they didn't give everything that the audience wanted. They said Fast 10, but that's it. Because they all know you wanted Fast 10 your seatbelts. They knew. They knew. They knew. Anyways, uh, so that's happening. Uh, remember a year ago when all the strikes were happening and Oof. everyone was like, that person's cool because they're striking. That person's cool because they're striking. That celebrity is cool because they said something on the social media scuba to do. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that that all kind of went to shit because uh, uh, have you guys ever heard of late night labs? What? You might because soon um, uh, Eric Day, Benjamin Michael or Michelle and Nick Confaloni uh, launched LA-based Late Night Labs with Natasha Leone and Ange uh, Angel Manuel Soto uh, to be an AI creative studio. Da -da -da. And everyone's just like, remember when all these cool actors were on pickets fighting against this shit? And they're like, well, maybe it's a tool that could be used in the creative process. Da -da -da. Um, so anyways, um, they, I they am viscerally started. angry right now. They, like, do you know this that is anger that you quote. feel when you feel it in your teeth? Like you feel like, uh, I, oh, I feel it. I feel it here. Like and it gets just, really uncomfortable. It's really hard uh, for me not to just like, these are, these are, these are the quotes from them. There are obviously big changes happening right now in our industry, said Confalone. But we're not talking about replacing people with AI, just as Pixar didn't replace animators with computers. Our shared vision is to bring this new technology to provide artists with tangible ownership in what they create. Put in all your creative stuff. It'll remix it and blend it back to you. Um, all right. Um, what else? Any anything? Any any big? Uh, anyone who's been paying attention knows AI is already ubiquitous, said Leon. It seems to me that it's better for us as artists to help shape this revolution then find ourselves at its mercy. Ba -da -ba. Anyways, uh, so moving on from that uh, very sparkling great now news, let's talk about more shitty Hollywood things. <laughs> um, 
Scarlett Johansson. I, that was a really, really not great. Gay and I, happy. I just have to. I have to give you that was a really great like transition that I was typing and I couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> it was too good. Scarlett Johansson also not happy because ChatGPT 4.0 named what's what's his name Sky Skyview. Um, they uh, the the people at ChatGPT wanted to hire her like nine months ago. Obviously, because she voiced uh, an AI in a Spike Jones movie about like divorce and a guy like using machine to replace the human experience. But, you know, that ended out very well for him um, because you know what? The AI left him like the AI should leave us alone. Anyways, uh, the new one, the new voice for chat GPT came out and uh, all her friends was like, hey, Scarlett. Remember how you've gotten a beef with Disney? Do you want to get a beef with ChatGPT? She was like, "Bet," and uh, she she she's not happy about it, and uh, people are talking about it. So, um, more bad movie news. Bang bang, you know what I'm saying? It's called inboxing. It's a one, two, three. You got a left cross hook. All right. So this one, in case that wasn't that- bad enough, hold my beer. <laughs> you know, pa- pa- Paramount Universal, right? Is it you know, Yeah, Uni- NBC Universal. We love them, right? Oppenheimer. They gave Oppenheimer like f- fifty weeks unadulterated movie, right? They're like, keep it in theaters, bring it back in theaters. City Walk, movies, Universal. You're like, yeah, we like this. They're doing better than every other studio. Every other studio doesn't care about the theatrical viewing experience. Maybe, who knows? Because the newest movie, Fall Guy, starring Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, directed by David Leach, that was who directed uh, Bullet Train, which I didn't care about, but directed other movies like um, what else did he do? Atomic Blonde. Uh, he did some other movies that are like actually pretty big, and like I actually put a lot of research into this thing. Because, okay, so he did, he did Deadpool 2, Hobbs and Shaw, and they all made Mega Millions, uh, which is, like, why they're like, oh, yeah, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, uh, he's a big boy, and Emily Blunt, she never, like, she's not a box office bomb. It's crazy. The movie so far has made, I think, $127 million against an $140 million budget, and we're not talking about marketing which is usually a hundred million dollars um everyone in the world is like we like it we we like the movie uh and and uh it released may 5th and in 14 days it's gonna head to digital uh two week theatrical window is what we're getting um with fall guy which is insane and i'll say this right was it during the the pandemic the was almost non-existent right when we were getting back into theaters like what was the was it 30 days it was like maybe like it was still like maybe like three four weeks okay holy but shit. the thing is like this the thing is like this it was like three or four weeks in theaters and then maybe like two months later it go to digital mm-hmm. and then slowly we started seeing like cool 30 days in theaters 30 days later it would go to it would be alpha theaters and then it'll go to digital. And so a lot of people are like, man, that window is getting smaller. Like you get it right away. The movie was out May 5th and it will be on digital like two days from now. Within the month it came out, it is going to digital. That is that's the crazy thing. Like it's not even like people don't even get a chance to miss it in theaters. It's just like Oh, well, now it's on it's here. It's it's very similar to the Black Widow tenant um, kind of debacle that of like studios not really caring about the theatrical experience and then thus changing like cost and what's that? What's the residuals? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's a it's a shitty thing. And a lot of people are like, well, why didn't it make a lot of money? And I'll say like this. A lot of highly critically acclaimed films that Ryan Gosling leads never make money. I, the last one, the last one he did that made a lot of money, I think, was probably The Notebook. 
No. Because Blade Runner broke even. Uh, the nice guys, like, barely made money. So, uh, the place between the pines, uh, Gray Man made, like, I don't think it made any money. I think it might have made some money. B-Rad's bringing up a point. Um, what about Barbie? It's not, a, it's not, it's not Ken movie. It's Barbie. Mm. And he's not the lead. He's the co-lead. Oh, you, oh, okay. No, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? I Where see, it's like. I see, I see. Emily Blunt, right? Edge of Tomorrow, Jungle Cruise, Quiet Place, all have done over 300 million. With like a hundred million dollar movie budget to back it up, and I'm not saying like Ryan Gosling is like a is a box office bomb, but it's also like pound for pound, most of the movies people like they're critical darlings, but like they hardly ever tend to be box office explosions. Um, a lot of people will say that Ken might have been their favorite part of the Barbie movie, but it's also like David Leach also never has had a box office bomb. But you know who like let's say let's say nine out of ten it, let's say eight out of ten eight out of ten times does not make like a huge box office like draw is ryan gosling um and it's not saying anything against him i think most people like him most people would not hate to see him lead more movies um see him in a comedic role see him in a romantic role this is that he doesn't bring a lot of the money in in a weird way and i don't know what it is i don't know what it is uh the numbers are there look at all the numbers and barbie is one notebook is another and then look at all the other ryan gosling movies just just look at that and then look at all crazy stupid love (laughs) yeah but he's not the lead he's he's like one of the co-leads he's a co-lead yeah he's a co-lead with steve carell but it's like him by himself doesn't bring a lot of tickets i don't know why i don't know why um so there's that i think that's all of the news that I have next time on Unless this shit show. <laughs> I no, that's 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 I think that's all the news I got. That's all. Wait, the wait, news no, you no. Got? One last thing. One, one last thing. thing. One last thing. Okay. Um, Tear us down some more. I well, I, I mean, to me, it's one of those like, uh, what, uh, do, do I get into this shit? I don't but know why. Um, because okay, so there's a game Warner Brothers Entertainment made called Multiverses. And I was really excited for it because I do like Smash Bro like games, but the controls were a little meh. And it's my no, favorite price. It's free. No. But no. they just introduced uh the Joker. Jason Voorhees, and I don't know why. <laughs> and then Agent Smith, which I know still why Jason maintains, Voorhees. I know why Jason Voorhees. Dead it's by just daylight, still maintains like... like it's the weirdest roster of video game characters you could play. You can play it. with fucking Steven Universe, LeBron James, Agent Smith, Arya Stark. <laughs> to me, I, I, oh gosh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be so non dude right now, and just, I just think it is such a dumb, uncreative, like, how do we take our IPs and recycle and Fortnite it <laughs> and Fortnite? How do we recycle? Do we have any original ideas? No, no. Oh no. man, I could I could send you all like the really <laughs> shitty. I've been starting to watch this YouTube channel called Patrick CC, mm-hmm. and he does a lot of good exposés on just like certain things. Some of them are like good. I like, hey, this is a good thing. I'm like, all right. But sometimes it's just like, why company X doesn't give a fuck about anything? It's like, I don't give a oh. fuck about you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll put it on the Discord. Maybe it's it, it it does like piss in some people's Cheerios, and I feel mm. bad, but it's like. It's it's good. I, I like I like his stuff, and he's very like I think he's very non biased, but it's like uh, it's biting, and that's the thing. It's like truth exposed feels biting. But anyways, Josh, your news. Uh, my news is old, but um, relevant. Maybe not really. I mean, I mean it is. I think it speaks volumes. I think it's really really interesting. Um, what did I call this? I had a name for this. I called this. The Great Helldivers 2 PSN debacle of 2024. And it has to be said that dramatically. Um, a few weeks ago, it was casually announced that um, players uh, on any platform, it doesn't matter what platform you are on, um, of Helldivers 2 had to, were required to have a PlayStation Network account to, in order to play the game. 
It didn't matter if you were on Steam. It didn't matter if you were on something else. I think it's it was only it's only on Steam and PS5. So, um, anyway, um, so you were required. The fucking internet blew up because some countries don't even allow you to have PSN accounts. So there was that. Um, it was fucking wild. The 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 PC master race that we joke around, they came out of the woodwork and they were like, this is not happening. The the reviews, the the negative reviews, like within an within hours of this announcement, that game went from being like one of the most popular games to being popular by irony because there were so many negative reviews and the player base had shrunk so low and here's the thing Arrowhead was Arrowhead is the who is the main developer it was um PlayStation is a publisher I think that's how that works PlayStation is the big daddy and Arrowhead is this little company that's making games for them and they're like Go get do lower reviews. Go do negative reviews. They're basically the developers. Egging, were yeah, that. the developers are like, this isn't us. I'm sorry, this is not us. This is PlayStation. This is a, and I. They, it's funny that they they kind of. I think PlayStation is like it was always intended to be a thing to do, because they want to be able to um, uh, ban players if need be for community safety and blah blah blah. And Steam people are like, you can see Steam usernames. Why can't you just use that? What's the what's the thing here? And so it was like all these workarounds, these bas these these back awkward uh, like. Sorry, it was just a lot. It was really funny to just watch go down, and then. Um, so this was a PlayStation. Yeah, PlayStation thing? was forcing this upon Arrowhead, all the users, all regardless the users, of regardless of because it's because it's on platform. Xbox too, right? Um, I don't. Is it yet? I don't think it is yet, I'll or it I'll take was. A look. I'll take a look. You get on. You get on. With um, this. but. I mean, the internet lost its mind. It was wild to watch. Even B Rad and I were talking about it. No, it's not on Xbox yet. Maybe gotcha. someday. Um, we were talking about it uh, in our our proverbial green room with ourselves. Um, it's it's interesting to just see how the community just blew up, and the Arrowhead was egging the the community on, and then eventually PlayStation does this like this amazing um, post where they go, "We heard you," we because every company. Every company does that where we heard your feedback on the Helldivers 2 account linking update. The May 6 update, which would have required Steam and PlayStation Network account linking for new players and for current players beginning May 30th, will not be moving forward. We're still learning what is best for PC players, and your feedback has been invaluable. So uh, the leave, leave, leave us alone. <laughs> Make quality of life things. Keep the servers al alive. Make better peer-to-peer -peer fucking uh, networking. That's it, right? Give the developers what they want. Seriously. There are so many other... Th it's like... it's like, This is the thing that you chose to focus on? This this is the thing? Wh what? Why not make... I mean... There are games that I'm like, why I not make that cross-play? Why not allow cross-play on I that? could only imagine, like, if, you know... And it's funny, like... I think a lot of people have an issue, like, don't know how to, like put on their evil super villain hat on yeah. <laughs> if i put mine on i imagine like they just want to show conversions mm -hmm. so they can have better market valuation and then be like all right we did this and blah 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 because i i guarantee you they probably just don't have good tracking on like who how many people are playing their game on all platforms at all times which i'm like well, that's your fucking fault. And then also be smarter about how you show that shit. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's just that's just weird. So anyway, it was just like, uh, yeah, the community banded together and left over 1,000 negative reviews in a few days. Yeah, it was wild. I had uh, I was playing uh, Destiny with some friends in my clan who were also Helldiver 2 players. And it was almost like a live tweet together where they were like, okay, now it's at 75 blah, blah, blah reviews. Oh, shit. Now it's here. And this was it was happening yeah. in seconds, just like I'm on Steam right now, and I see recent reviews. It's mixed, and then all <laughs> reviews, it's mostly positive. It was. I mean, I, I mean, it was wild to like when it before that. 
I couldn't go a, a day without hearing somebody talk about it. Like I, I stopped playing it just because I was kind of a little burnt out and I got really obsessed with playing Fallout 4, which has been what I've been doing. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, that was my news. I just thought it was really interesting. I, I, I've been really, I've been in this place where I've been wondering about corporations and, and shit and when when the little guy stands up to the big guy i'm like go you fucking three c's go. Uh, the three c's of the apocalypse man consumerism capitalization uh capital uh capital ca- yeah capitalization capitalism? capitalism and capitalism and uh um, corporatism yeah it's three c's uh, of the apocalypse bro it's, they all, and they all uh, yeah. feed each other. They all feed each other. I oh, uh, uh, I'll let you read my essay when I'm done. But the the I just learned about something that I had no idea was true, and it was all because it's this thing that is a part of our lives every day, and nobody knew about it, and it was started by corporations. And I'm like, oh my god, oh my god. There's so many things that corporations inform. The reason why taxes are different now is because of mm-hmm. corporations. Like we in the entertainment industry, we got fucked because we're not off. I mean, we are. I mean, now it's much more regular that you're going to have like independent people as corporations. But before it was like it wasn't as prevalent um, and write offs were very different. And when corporation taxes got anyway it's that's a whole other podcast that we don't host (laughs) it's i mean Uh, that's that's the thing like you know it's very anti-american to say what i'm about to say but it's like america land of the free where businesses have more rights than people mm -hmm. and like on paper that sounds so fucked up and you're, and most people will be like, no, it's not. That's that's terrible. It's like you would see that it's so much harder for people to gain rights and to be more important than mm-hmm. a company and, or a business. And it's like it's such a weird, a weird fucking thing. Um, questions? Yeah, let's uh, let's go into questions. Let me find the window. Chrome. Um, okay. So this is the part of the show in which we answer questions from you, the people. And I'm just going to just, I'm going to too long don't read this. Join the Discord, nerdon.tv slash Discord. There are channels within there that you can submit the questions. That's like the fastest, easiest, really borderline most fun way to submit questions because sometimes your fellow viewers or Nerd On Nation members answer those questions together, and it's a lot of fun. Or they, like, build off of each other, and I, I love it. It's it's a, lot, it's a lot of fun. Or you can join the Nerd On Nation, powered by Patreon, nerdon.tv back, backslash, no, it's not backslash, slash Patreon, and join the Nerd On Nation. And, yeah, get cool stuff, like uh, early access to videos that Tom is making, uh, episodes, uh, all sorts of fun stuff. And you help us do this. We get to do this. We get to talk to you. Be like Brad. Be like B Rad, who who joined again just like just like now. I mean, like a few minutes ago. I shouldn't exaggerate. Like forty five, like an hour ago. Anyway, you can ask questions like Mamba asks. After a stressful day, what are the things you like to do to unwind? Um, after a stressful day. What are some things I like to do to unwind? Depends what time of the day it is. <laughs> Cause I'll say like this, if, if if it's an earlier day, like sometimes I get away with like cutting out of the oddball things that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'll go for like a walk. I'll like go outside and I'll just like go to like, what's that fucking place called? Um, Runyon, I'll go to Runyon, mm-hmm. um, smell some good old dog piss, and as all Hell my yeah. quote unquote fellow athletes, they're all like, Tom, you really like to go to Runyon because you want to see hot girls in yoga pants. And I'm like, it's not just that. It's not just that. Um, uh, but like, I like just going out, putting headphones in, listening to music, and just being like, 
I'm out. I'm I'm away from it all. Fucking and like if I go to like a nice spot, like a nice enough spot to hike, it's like I kind of forget that I'm in a city. Mm. And like that's just enough to be like, cool. I'm away from it all. If I was away from it all, I may not have to come back. And it's not like um you know, it's not like, oh, like I know some people are like really about nature and stuff like that. And I think that's really great. And I think there are some actual scientific health things about biophilia and stuff like that. But um, that's that's nice. Um, if it's later in the day, maybe I'll um, I'll go. I'll go catch a movie. Um, maybe I'll I'll go catch a movie and then just have some pop. I, I buy a kid's meal. I buy an eight dollar kid's Do meal. Do you really? Cause it's so fucking cheap. I get everything I want. I get a drink. I can refill that. I get popcorn, and I get a little little sweet snack. And I'm like, dude, eight bucks? Yeah. You can't get you can't get that value fucking anywhere. And it's like when you actually like break down how much food you need. Like Bonnie and I, most of the time, will share when we go to restaurants. Cause sometimes you get like this, this thing, and you're like, that's a lot. Yeah, That's just get two sides and one main, and then you're yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Um, what else will I do? I mean, if I'm after after a long day, let me let me read that question. Uh, Josh, you got any? What do you like to do? Um, I mean it 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 varies. Um, I'm a I'm a person that likes to meditate, so I will when I'm having a particularly ang anxiety moment i will i'll meditate um i have like my go-to like meditation music and then i'll just like even if it's just for a moment or a few mi minutes um but like oftentimes i'll want to i don't want to i don't want to make dinner i'm on those kinds of days i'm like no i'm not making dinner and we'll order something um and then if i can i will get the best of both worlds and I will hang out with Bonnie and we'll binge TV together or movies. And then after that, I will usually stay up too late playing video games. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I haven't been able to play a lot of video games. Um, like for leisure lately mm -hmm. um honestly uh sometimes i kind of just like to clean <laughs> like organize my room or organize, i get it. like i totally understand uh, it. A, a, my card collection and mm -hmm. i'll just like cool i need to like i have like fucking 14 commander decks i was like cool break one of those down clean it all up put it all away sort out the extras put it aside um and yeah it's it's i think when i've had a stressful day what i want to do is maintain my agency mm. and so anything i can do to feel like i can control something mm -hmm. then then i like to do it so it's like i can put myself in nature i can go to a workout i can go to a movie um stressful days feel like i'm stuck doing this thing that i i don't want to do and i've been doing for a long time and now i need to just go do something that i i don't i want to do that's and, your um, choice there's been times where like yeah there's some sometimes i was like cool i'll take myself out to eat something like too expensive but yeah can't do that now. um you just can't do it yeah. right now don't be absolute about it just right now it's just right can't now. can't do that for the near future for, the, uh, for right now yeah uh yeah. next question yeah. Next question is comes from Jose Cipher. What's a commercial slash PSA that scared you as a child? And I know my answer. It, oh, it, please. It, it changed my life. No, that's an exaggeration, but almost not. So when I was a kid in the 80s, when the pyramids were still young, no, uh, in the 80s, um, there was this uh, toy called the My Buddy doll. Um, oh. <laughs> it's called the My Buddy doll, and I had one, and it was my favorite toy. I loved it. And then uh, Child's Play came out or was coming out, and I saw a trailer. I don't remember how I saw it. I don't remember why I saw it. Um, I saw a trailer, and I hated my My Buddy doll forever. 
and like I um my mom would give it to me like when I was going to bed and she would hear a few minutes later thud because I would throw it across the room because I didn't want it anywhere near me and um I used to have a recurring dream that that Chucky it was I don't know why it was a it was a white room or space it was large and I was running from Chucky I don't know what Chucky is dumb like when I watch it as a, an adult I'm like that is so <laughs> dumb like some of the dialogue for Chucky is so dumb but also yeah, at the was, same uh, time it was trying to be a awesome. flick. yeah exactly a, dem- a, a demon or a, a, a serial killer takes over a doll <laughs> possesses a doll and it's gone on for a year. It's still going. The TV show is still going, isn't it? Like it just it's renewed, or something. <laughs> oh yeah, the uh, the USA show with uh, Devin Sawa. Yeah, and isn't so wait? Um, so does that still give you the heebie-jeebies? No, I think at this point it's so dumb that I. It's so dumb. The dialogue is so dumb that I'm just I can't. It's I just can't be scared by that. Anyway, man, I'm 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 literally actually scouring the internet right now to find. I said child's play, right? Scary. Not problem child. Problem child is something completely different. He's a child's play. That had John Ritter in uh, it. <laughs> John Ritter's not scary. Um, I I can't find a, a scary PSA. Um, I don't, and I'm watching some. Holy shit! Some of this shit is. Locked Doritos up. and Cheetos had one that I saw somebody sent me on uh, TikTok a little while ago that I've like some commercials. I'm like the things that they got they got away with earlier. Like I'm just like, oh, man. Oh, well, man. there's one that's apparently a very famous one on the Internet. I'll send it to you after this, but it's called Top Chef 2007 from Canada. That shit. Appar- I just watched it. That shit's fucked up. Oh, no. It's about like keeping the kitchen clean or else people get fucking scarred i'm like yo they show this on the television that's yeah. crazy um i can't say there is a commercial or a psa that scared me a lot as a kid i would have to say like i mean as a child there are scenes in things that probably definitely were like I feel like they were definitely like homages to some of the fears like Americans had. So what I'm saying is the closest thing I have to this is uh, Terminator 2, the vision that Linda Hamilton, Sarah Connor has of the the nuclear fallout. Mm-hmm. Like that shit feels like a PSA. And um, that feels like... Did I ever like... send you Bonnie's um, teaser uh, that we made for her script? I have to send you that. I, I've it read it, about but it. I haven't. I don't think I've ever seen anything of it. I'll send, oh, I, I, I'll I send a teaser to you. About. Okay, um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I I think that 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 imagery of like nuclear attack is very like reminiscent of the fear people had. So that's like the closest thing I have to it. But I mean, I'll say this. Uh, I mean, I also I think some of the I feel. I mean. The closest thing I have, I think the closest thing I have is fucking one, like, sobriety PSA um, when um, it's, like, this girl who's drinking at a party, and she has, like, a beer bottle, and mm-hmm. she's, like, talking, and then someone bumps into her, and she fucking knocks her tooth out with the beer bottle. Um, and it's just, like, one drink, maybe too many, or something like that. And I was just, like, I don't want to lose my fucking tea that shit sucks <laughs> um so that's it that's that's uh that's 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 the close thing i get to it <laughs> okay and i was like a teenager okay okay um the i totally would download a car t-dog if i could download fucking cars i'd do it non-stop the next question that's marked is one that we've already done we did in the past i remember Oh, maybe I haven't done it, so I'll take it off. Okay. And uh, we'll do the one above it. 
Uh, dog. Uh, if you could have a weapon with a special ability, that what would the weapon and the ability be? Example: a pair of brass knuckles that causes frostbite whenever you make. Oh my god! So uh, a D and D weapon. I, that's that's hardcore. I love that. Um. Oh, you you obviously have an idea. Go for it. Well, it's because because like oh D and D world, I could just fucking make a Wizards of the Coast Magic the Gathering weapon. Cool. I want to use uh, <laughs> I'll I'll use a um um uh, sword of Erebos's sword of selves. So it's a so whip of Erebos, when it does damage, I, I have lifeling and death touch. But if I do damage to somebody, I make two zombies. Oh, my <laughs> and God. Then Blade of Cells, every time I swing with that creature, it makes copies of itself for as many opponents I have. So it swings at everybody. So if I combine the two, then if I attack somebody, I gain that life. They auto die. I make two zombies, but I also attacked three other people. Wow. Damn, girl. <laughs> it's just a broken ass sword. That's all damn, it is. Damn, girl. I thought of a sword. I, I don't know if this is like. This kind of sounds fucked up to me, but. Okay, so it's a sword that. It heals at the same time it damages. So, like, it's, it's, it's whatever you're slicing at. The person is feeling the pain but they're also being healed at the same time. So you can just keep hacking at them. <laughs> I love that shit. Dude, can you turn it to a chainsaw? <laughs> that is fucked up. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Shit. That's a good weapon. <laughs> That's a good weapon. That's a good weapon. Wow. Anyway, uh, those are the pre-selected. Uh, let's see if there's any questions in the bin. Um, hmm. Uh, hmm. No questions in the pre-select. All these, uh, man, I forget. Some of these were actually going to be like podcast suggestions that we completely forgot to bring up when we had our meeting. Uh, Fucking whoops. Um, uh, any questions in the chat? Any? Any? We got time for one more. Yeah, question. one more question. Any question at all? That hopefully Mamba will not be mad that I that I answer in my nice way. Hey Josh, if you use a gamma gun in Fallout 4 on a ghoul, it heals the ghoul. You can chop off its limb, keep healing, nice. keep it alive. I love that. That's like East Coast crab fishermen when they nice. just like take off the big claw and throw the crab back in because it'll grow the claw back. Nice. Unlimited crab claw, baby. Um, or long crab claw. My stomach's being weird right now, so I'm going to request that we end the show. All right. Well, Not if you got questions, weird, put them in the Discord. Yeah. Send send it over. Um, we'll end it tonight. Um, yeah. Thank you everyone for swinging by. And uh, yeah, if you guys check out everyone. some of the new stuff, we have a new. There's a new video coming out tomorrow. Check it out on Patreon if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, Josh. Yeah. Um, I appreciate all y'all hang, hang, uh, hanging out with us. If you are new to Nerd On, check out our website, NerdOn.tv. It has all of our. All of our past episodes, which is literally in the hundreds. Um, thanks for watching on YouTube or Twitch if you're joining uh, there. Um, yeah, we're always here on Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Tom is here on Thursdays and sometimes more days. Um, I still haven't gotten back yet, so I apologize for that. And I feel great shame, but uh, we're moving on. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, one last thing. Very important. Consider joining the Nerd On Nation powered by Patreon. Uh, but now that that is it. That is all the stuff. Take care of yourselves. You know the drill. As always, we're gonna raid Unaleska watching uh, or playing Bloodborne. Sweet. You know the drill. As always, nerd on. Nerd on.